Hi guys, in this lesson today we're going to talk about how to graph the sine function. Um, there are a lot, there's a lot of stuff here that you need to write down. We will fill it in along the way. Um, let's take a look first of all, if you will find your graphing calculator, and we're going to graph this on our graphing calculator so we can see what it looks like, and then these words will make more sense to us. So in your graphing calculator, to graph this, we're going to go to the y equals button, um, and then I'm just going to clear this out. I know it already says it, but we're going to just use the sine, cosine, tangent buttons that are here. And today we're just talking about sine. Later we'll talk about cosine. Tangent, we will not get to this year. So we're just going to start with sine. So we just type in sine of x. And then if you want to close that parentheses, you can. Now when you go to graph it, we want to go to zoom trig. So we go to zoom and then 7 is trig. And then we get a graph that looks like this. You can see it's making waves. And that is what happens with both a sine and a cosine graph. It will make these waves. Now, I want to do another thing is go to the trace button. So if you click on trace up here, and now just start heading to the, to the right, let's say. First of all, this we're at the origin. It's at 0, 0, obviously. Let's trace all the way over to this second point over here and see where it is, because it's not 1, 1, or uh, 1, 0, or 2, 0 even. OK, so let's just click over. Okay, first of all, I'm going to stop here along the way. You can see this is 1, and this is 1.57. Interesting number. Let's keep going. And I get over here. This is the closest to 0 as I'm going to get. Um, remember, that's 5 times 10 to the negative 10th, so that's, that's 0. And look at what the x value is. The x value is 3.14. So we are no longer counting by 1, 2, 3, 4. We're counting by pi's. So this is pi, this is pi over 2, this is 3 pi over 2, and if we go all the way over here, this will be 2 pi. 2 pi will be 6.28, let's just see. And here we are, 6.28. So each of these is counting by a half of a pi every time. If we go back to our paper, we can see how that relates. All right, so here on our paper, look at this, this x-axis. Notice it's not counting 1, 2, 3. It's counting by pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi, which those are the numbers. If you have a unit circle, those are the numbers on your unit circle, right? This is pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. Interesting. So we're going to see how these numbers on the unit circle are going to relate to this. Let's take a second, first of all, to graph this. You can count. On any graph ever, you can always count by whatever you want to count by. Um, you always want to count by things that kind of make sense and count by things that fit on your graph. So I'm just going to count, I'm going to count two boxes for every one. So it's like a half, one, one and a half, two, etc. Because I think that'll allow us to see what's going on a little bit better. Of course, you could count the, you know, just by one box, that would be fine. Let's draw this in here now. Um, let's go back to our graphing calculator and see how it goes. I remember, though, that there was a point at 0, 0. There was another point at pi 0. Um, I think you could maybe guess, maybe not, that there was going I mean, we actually we went over to it, didn't we? And we saw that there was one there at 2 pi 0. Let's go back and see. OK, so that is the point at 2 pi 0. And then we talked about the others. It repeats the same way on the other side. Let's look at where this minimum value is. OK, we're at y is negative 1, and x is 4.71. 4.71 is 1 and a half pi. And then I'll go to the max point over to the left. And here I am at y is 1. This is a half pi. Okay, if you take 3.14 and divide by 2, you'd get 1.57. So let's go back to our paper. I'm going to put a point here at pi over 2, 1. Another one down here at pi over 2, or 3 pi over 2, negative 1. And then I've got the one here. And so when I connect these, I'm going to connect them with a wave pattern. Don't make it a V. It's not a V pattern. It is a wave pattern like this. And so let's go the other way. What we're doing is, in, in our case, the way we have it set up with our, our hash marks, we're going to go down to left to, and then left to up to, left to up to, left to down to. So it's just this, it's the same pattern, it's just 
how, you know, whether you're going up or down. And so again, we're going to connect these with a wave pattern. And this is a sine curve. Let's talk about some of these terms. The period is the length of one complete cycle. What that means is on this graph, and you don't need to draw this, but I'm going to show you. If we start here and we go up, down, down, up, that is one complete cycle. So it has, see, it kind of has four parts to it. It has four parts. It goes up, down, down, up. That makes one complete cycle. Now we're back where we started. Here, it kind of looks like we're back where we started, but we're not really because it didn't go all the way over. Okay, so this is up, down, down, up. In our circle, what's going on here is we are starting, well, we're kind of starting here, and we go up, down, down, up. Okay, each of those little pieces is the piece of the, goes on here to our graph. All right, and then the other way. Now, you can count your period like I did from the center, going up, down, down, up, but you can also count it from wherever. So for instance, maybe you said, I want to count it from this top part. Okay, then you're going to go four parts, one, two, three, four, and we've got all four of them here, down, down, up, up in this case. And anyway, a period is the length of one complete cycle. Over the margin here, I have how long it is for the parent function y equals sine of x. And so that original one I had circled in red shows us that one complete cycle is 2 pi. The amplitude is half the distance between the minimum and the maximum values. And by the minimum and maximum values, I mean the same thing that we've been talking about all year. This is my max and this is my min. The amplitude is half the distance between these. It's also typically, see this line that runs through the center? We call that usually the midline. It's also the distance between the midline and the max, or the midline and the min. So in this case, our amplitude is 1. It goes up to 1, it goes down to negative 1. Amplitude of 1. The frequency is the reciprocal of the period. Um, it's just, it's another way of looking at something. So the number of cycles in a given time. So for instance, how frequently is that wave coming up? So like if you're sitting on the beach, how frequently is the wave coming up to hit you on the feet? And so in this case, it's 1 over 2 pi. It's one, it hits you one time within every period of 2, two pi is coming by. The frequency, I will say maybe at this point in our mathematical career, we really just need to focus on that it's 1 over the period. Um, so if it's 2 pi here, it's 1 over 2 pi here. Phase shift is just a fancy way of saying a horizontal translation. That is, let me just show you, again, you don't have to draw this, but the parent function starts here, but you know what? There's other functions that maybe start here and go up, down, down, up, okay? And if that's the case, it has a phase shift. It has been translated over to the right one unit, or actually in this case, pi over two units. So phase shift is just another way to say horizontal translation. In this case, we do not have a phase shift on our parent function. So for the parent function, we don't have a phase shift. Okay, how do we graph this? How are we supposed to even figure this out? Couple things here. One thing is the x-axis scale. We have to figure out how, what hash marks do we even put there? And then what we do is we take the period and we divide that period, divide by four. And so in this case, our period was two pi. If we take 2 pi, divide by 4, that gives us pi over 2. That tells me I was counting by pi over 2s. Okay, that's how you figure out what to do on your x-axis. Also, as far as graphing goes, the parent graph of a sine function starts at 0, 0, and goes up first. That's the parent function. Of course, we will move this around. If we move it up, it's going to start there. But it basically starts kind of like in the middle of this curve here and goes up from there. That's a sine function. And the reason I bring that up is we will get to a cosine function, which is going to look similar, but the starting point's going to be different. So this time it starts like in the middle of the curve there and goes up from there. Okay, we will get to, of course, our HIVO rules. And so this is like the, the full equation to figure out our HIVO rules. Um, that A in the front is going to be the vertical stretch, just like it always is. In this case, it's amplitude. So this wave went like this. The next wave might be much taller. Okay, if the wave is taller, that's the amplitude stretch. 
The B, which is something that we don't deal with a whole lot of in Algebra 2, but with the sine function, we actually do a little bit with that. That's going to be a horizontal stretch. That's going to take this and stretch it out. Like imagine this is like a slinky, like a spring, and you stretched it out further. It would still have the same height and the same depth, but just be stretched out a little bit more. That's what that letter would do there, whatever number is in there. Um, Hyvo says that the inside is going to be the horizontal translation, and of course it's always opposite because it's negative. And the number on the end is going to be the vertical translation. That is, we could move this whole thing and move it up one and start from there. Okay, let's start looking at some different ways to translate this graph. One thing is, what if we have the negative sine of theta? Well, what does that mean to you? Do you know what that negative does? Of course, it reflects it in the x-axis. And so what I want you to do here is go back and redraw your sine function and then take that and reflect it. For this, you might want to use either a different color or use a solid line and a dotted line. And I'm also going to count again by every other box for this one. All right, so here's my sine function. When I reflect this in the x-axis, this point's going to be reflected down here. This point's going to stay where it is. This one's going to come up here. This one stays where it is, and so forth. And so I'm going to connect these now. Another thing is all of these graphs should have an arrow on the end showing you that they go on forever that way. Okay, so my other graph, the, y, the negative sine of x, is going to be like this. It has reflected across the x-axis. Let's turn to the page and do another example. Okay, on this page, um, let's maybe call this function a, and let's call this function b. Because here's what we do. When we look at these and figure out how to graph them, we have to look at the period and the amplitude. Those are the main things. Because the period tells you your x-axis, the amplitude tells you your y-axis. And what we do for the period, for the x-axis, we take 2 pi, excuse me, we take the period and divide by b. Okay, let me talk, tell you what I'm talking about. In this case, the period right here, the period is always 2 pi, divided by b. b is always the number that's inside there. So for graph a, our period is just 2 pi. It's 2 pi over 1. Also for graph b, there's nothing in front of the theta there, and so once again the period is 2 pi. To find out my x-axis, I take the period and I divide by 4. And so 2 pi divided by 4 is pi over 2. So just like on the other graph paper, I'm going to go pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. So that gives me my x-axis. My y-axis is from the amplitude. The amplitude is the number in the very front, that a. So in this case, my a graph has an amplitude of 3, and my b graph has an amplitude of 1 half. I'm tempted to want to count by one half. Let's see, if I do, if I did one half, one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, I think I'm going to stick with that. I know it goes off the graph, but I just feel like that's going to help us see things a little bit better. And of course, I want to go the same way in the other direction, in the negative direction. And so my negative three is going to be a little bit off here. Okay, I need to take these one at a time. I'm going to take this first one. There is no phase shift, that means going left or right, and there is no a vertical shift going up and down. It's just going to start at 0, 0, just like we're supposed to. The only difference is it's going to go up 3. For that amplitude, I'm going to draw lines that kind of create a highway. That means it's going to help me stay sort of in the boundaries. Um, so I'm going to come here. It's this amplitude of 3. That means it's going to go all the way up to 3 and it's going to go all the way down to negative 3. And because there is no phase shift or um, vertical shift, it means that my center line is going to be here at y equals 0. Center line for the other one is also y equals 0. So I'm here with my 3 sine theta. What that means is I start at 0, 0. I'm going to go all the way up to 3 and over pi over 2, and then down to pi, and then down here, and then all the way back up to the center line, 
back up here. And so now I have one period graphed of my sine curve. I need to go the other way, so I'm going to do that also. And so these highway lines are really helpful because they show me how to stay in bounds, where I'm supposed to go to. I'm going to do the next one now, the one half sine theta. Okay, since it is one half, the amplitude, I'm going to put my highway lines there at one half. That's where I need to stay in from. My center line is still here at y equals zero. And I still start at zero, zero, just like I almost always do with a sign. And I'm going to go up a half and over pi over two. Down a half, pi over two. Down a half, pi over two. Up a half, pi over two. Okay, look at this sine curve. Can you see, obviously it's much flatter than the other one, and but its period is the same. So it took the same amount of time for that one pi, one, excuse me, that two pi, the whole period to go through as it did this one. But it's just much shorter waves, much um, smaller waves. And again, I do need to go the other way. And so here's the other side of it. I'm just trying to compare to you, show you what amplitude does. The difference between these two graphs, the only difference was a three here and a one half here. That made the one half much smaller and made the three much taller. Okay, let's go on to example number two. Okay, on this problem, notice we do have a four and a one half, but they're not out in front. When they're out in front, that's the amplitude. When they're in here, that affects our period instead. We define period as two pi divided by b. So let's go and label these again. Let's say this is graph A and this is graph B. For graph A, my period is going to be 2 pi divided by 4. That is pi over 2. And for graph B, my period is going to be 1 half. My period is going to be 2 pi divided by 1 half. And 2 pi divided by 1 half is 4 pi. Okay, so now we know what the period is. To set up our x-axis, we have to take that period and divide by 4. So for the x-axis, if I take this and divide by 4, that means I need increments at pi over 8. That's pretty small, pi over 8. On this one, if I take my period and divide by 4, I just get pi. So I need to figure out how to set up my axes so that I can get a pi over 8, but yet still get a pi. And that's going to be kind of difficult to do. Um, remember I said a minute ago, you can set up your axes any way you want. I mean, your, your tick marks at least, any way you want, as long as it makes sense with what you're doing. Here's what I'm going to do on this one. Even though my period is all the way up to 4 pi, I am just going to count to 2 pi. And so what's going to happen is from 2 pi to negative 2 pi is going to be my entire period. Okay, this whole thing is just going to be one of those. But then the other one has pi over 8s, so I need to break this up. So that was 2 pi. I'm going to count to the middle and get a pi. And I'm going to split that in half to get down to pi over 2. And of course I split that in half. That's going to give me a pi over 4. And half of that is a pi over 8, and that's actually what I'm looking for. And so that's, it's going to be really skinny, okay? But I wanted to set this up in a way that would fit both of the graphs on there at the same time. So I'm basically going to split these. I'm not going to do every single one, but I'm going to split these in half so that I can graph them appropriately. Let's start with graph A. It is the more difficult one. Um, it has increments of pi over 8. Let's talk about amplitude. Okay, amplitude is just one. There's nothing there in front, and that's where we would find our amplitude from. So once again, I'm going to make this one and this two. It's going to give me a little bit more space to deal with. Okay, so for this, sine graph, usually a parent function is going to start at zero, zero and go up. This one does that. Um, however, it's going to go up to one because my amplitude is one and it's going to go over an eighth. That is not very far, right? That's going to be way up here, halfway over. And then it's going to come down another eighth, and then it goes down and over the eighth, goes up and over the eighth. Okay, look at this. Look how skinny this graph is. That is one period of that first graph. I'm going to go ahead and finish another one going the other way so I have at least two periods graphed. 
If you're wondering how many of these waves do you have to draw, um, a lot of times on the test or quiz, I will have instructions that say, draw at least one period or draw at least two periods. I like to get at least two in there, but in the case of this next one, we're only going to have room to put one period in there. But I just wanted to show you how that's set up. That four in the front there makes it really skinny. It basically makes it a fourth as wide as the original parent function. Okay, this one though, is going to be two times as wide as the original parent function. And that was the one where we said it was counting by four pi's. If we divided, or excuse me, this period is four pi. And if we divide that by four, we say it's counting by pi. So once again, it's going to start at zero, zero. It's going to go up one and over pi. It's going to go down one and over pi. And that's as far as we can go on this side. And that's it. We need to go the other way, down pi, or excuse me, down one over pi, up one over pi. I tried to make it rounded. It's not supposed to be V's. Um, I did my best. So here we have, this is one period. Remember the parent function had one period within just like half of our space, basically. This one has one period. It's taking up that whole space, takes up one period. It's a very slow moving wave, right? This, however, is a very quick, fast moving wave, but they have the same height. This one's going to come at you faster, but it's just as high. This one is slower, but again, it is just as high. But look at the difference between the shapes of those waves, even though the only difference is their period. Their amplitude is exactly the same. Okay, on the next graph, this only has space for one. Good, a little bit less, less um, going on here. I've started to look at everything involved here because there is more involved. Um, the period is always 2 pi over b, which in this case is just 2 pi. If there was a b, it would be in there next to the theta. There is no b, and so it's just 2 pi. That means that our x-axis, we take that period and we divide by 4. And so once again, we have a period of pi over two. That's a common one that we're going to have. So I went ahead and set up my x-axis, counting by pi over twos. The amplitude, do you remember where the amplitude comes from? The amplitude is right here, it's two. That tells me the height, and that tells me what to count by on my y-axis. Phase shift is if there's something being added or subtracted next to the theta. There is none. The vertical shift, though, is going up one. So here's a deal. Our, our center line has moved up one. Um, I have been calling it center line. I know in delta they call it a midline, um, but that's going to be at y equals one. And then it's going to have to go up two from there, so I actually need to get to three. So the question is, do we want to go to three off of the graph, or should we just recount? I think just recount. What I mean is, I'm just going to count by ones. So this is actually a two, three, four, and I'm gonna go the same amount in the negative direction. Okay, now let's talk about that midline and highway and draw it in appropriately. That our midline is now at y equals one. That is this right here. And again, it doesn't matter if this is a solid line or a dotted line. The amplitude is two. That means from the midline, it's going to go up two. So it's going all the way up here to three actually, because it was two above the midline. And then down below, it's going down one, well, it's going down two from the midline, which lands me at negative one. And so now when I draw my graph, you know, I usually start at the origin. Well, now I'm starting here because this is my center line. I'm, I want to start at the center of that curve is where I want to start. And when I go now to my next point, I want to go up two and over pi over two. Two because of this, pi over two because of this. And then I go down to and right pi over two, down to right pi over two, up to right pi over two. And so my positive portion of my graph is going to look like this. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Okay, so my other side is going to look like this. My other side's looking a little bit V-like. I don't like that. It should be more rounded. Main thing here, it was shifted up one unit and because of that, it had an amplitude of two, and so that two and the one together made it go up to three and down to negative one. Okay, let's see if we have time for one more graph. I'm not sure if we do. We're gonna to try to put that other graph on this video. If it doesn't fit on this video, we'll just have to put it on the next video.